What is going on everybody? My name is James. Welcome back to another episode in my Path to Power. Before we get into the episode though, if you guys are looking to pick up some MSP or PSN cards, make sure to check out thegamekeys.co.uk or if FIFA coins are more your thing, check out justfifacoins.com. You can use the code JAPES to get yourself a 5% discount on their instant delivery. And we are rolling away with our squad. I did pick up an extra Banega. I did list him for a buy now of only a couple hundred coins more. But he's going to sell very, very quickly. Uh, and that's just an easy way to make, you know, some coins here, some coins there. It's not going to, you know, win me the big informed player that I'm hoping to get. But it's going to allow me to uh, add to it. And I wanted to replace my right back and my... Or not replace my right back and my left back. Because I'm very fond of them. But I wanted to add backups or fitness rotational players that I can work into the side. Uh, when I have fitness issues. And that way I'm not going out and I'm spending a bunch of coins on fitness cards. They do tend to stack up. I bought... I've actually bought a lot of fitness cards this year because I haven't really been good about the way I want to go about switching around my team. Um, and I suppose that's kind of a shame on me thing. Uh, but that's that's okay. It is what it is. I'm going to go out and I'm going to eventually pick up Ansaldi on a 500 coin buy now. And I think I'm going to pick up Montoya on an 800 coin buy now. I thought that was a pretty decent buy. Uh, and he was a player that I haven't used before, that I, but I thought might be interesting to try. I couldn't really... I mean, he's got 88 pace. And an 88 pace gold uh, rare right back for 800 coins really speaks to the depth at that position in the BBVA. So we're heading forward. We've got Benega. And we've got Ben Yat, who stole the show last time. And if you guys, uh, I mentioned a few, I mentioned a few things about him, but I'll get into that a little bit further on. We have Xavi, Benega, and Ben Yat in the midfield. And actually, I really, really like this midfield. Um, I've got to get rid of these terrible kits that I have. And this guy's actually a very, very good player. Um, and this was a very, very difficult game that I played. So you're gonna see, you're gonna see the outcome of that uh, coming up here. But that's a wonderful, wonderful England side. Um, as far as ultimate team goes. And he's going to get things started. This is, I'm going to talk, touch on Raheem Sterling. I absolutely hate playing against him. He's one of my, one of the players that every time I come up against him, he seems to do something that absolutely ruins me or wrecks me. And I'm like, ah, I should really go buy him and use him myself, try him out. Uh, but a wonderful uh, Burba spin or stop and turn, which is, I think, what actually EA calls it uh, to the inside. And could Ter Stegen maybe have done better? Sure, but it's a first time shot and he puts it on target and it's a wonderful pass onto the inside. So I can't really complain too much about that. Now we're outside. I saw a comment, I think I maybe touched on this before, that said Faguli isn't suited to the right forward position. I would hands down disagree with that, especially with the way I like to use right forwards where they're not your super, super goal scoring threat. Um, yeah, I, you know, my striker is going to be my main goal scoring threat. Maybe, you know, and, and I actually tend to lean towards the left forward side for more of a goal scoring threat than the right forward side. And you're going to say, Japes, well, they're perfectly even. What's the deal with that? And I think that's because, um, and this is going to sound silly, but I play a ton, a freaking ton of pro clubs. And I tend to find myself in playing either like a left striker, left forward, a left wing, uh, or kind of like an attacking midfielder position. And because of that, I am I am used to or more used to taking players on from those positions. Um, and now that's not to say that I won't get over to the right from time to time or things of that nature, but I tend to be more willing to take players on from the left side. It's just one of those natural tendencies that I've noticed in my game. If you actually go back and think about the way you play FIFA, you will be able to you'll be able to kind of balance yourself out more. I think it's something that I know I try to work on. So it's like, all right, if I consistently try to take players on from this side, my opponent might become wary of it. No, all right, he's got Faguli over on this side. And that might have something to do as well with Faguli only having three star skills. Um, even though I think he is a brilliant supporting uh, forward. And we're two two, and I've talked about, and I'm going I'm totally off tangent now, and all all sorts of places that I uh, I promised myself that I wouldn't necessarily go, um, but I mentioned something in the last episode that about having Ben Yat or a free kick taker in your team that has the potential to change a game for you. 33 yards out, I don't whether if it was a foul or it was not, that is a pretty much automatic free kick. Um, Through. Three to two now, the score, 68th minute, that gives me the lead, and the next goal was undoubtedly gonna win this game, the way it was going. After those first two went in, both of us kind of took a step back, 
thought, okay, no more, no more conceding any of these cheap, easy goals. It's going to have to be something special to kind of beat us. And that is a wonderful free kick. Whether or not you think it's special, I think with the timing a little bit later on in the game, kind of getting a one opportunity that wasn't really coming, for me, that's a special uh, goal. And now he scored four free kicks for us in the matter of two games, which is beyond phenomenal. We're also getting a nice coin total. And uh, one of the things that I meant to say at the very beginning of Ultimate Team, way, 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 way back in the first path to power, I bought as many of the EA Sports Coin Football or EA Sports Football Club coin boosts that I could. And I've finally broken into the thousand coin boost. So you're gonna see I'm gonna start getting a lot more coins for the games. Now I wanted a player to back up Faguli because I did sell on Carlos Vela. I went out and I thought, all right, I really just want somebody that I can get on a discount. Carlos Vela, maybe I'd get him back. And then I thought, all right, let's just put in a buy now for a gold, maybe a thousand coins. Somebody might have listed something a little too low. There he is, Suzaeta, uh, 800 coins. And the right wing to right forward card goes for, I'd imagine, at least 800 coins, if not more like 900 or a thousand. So that is a wonderful buy. Um, and I'll undoubtedly be able to double my coins on him, sell them on for at least 15, well, maybe not double, but about 1,600 coins, um, which would be about, well, yeah, I guess it's doubling in the EA tax, you know, blah, blah, blah. You guys get the picture, but I will be able to make coins on it. So that is a fantastic buy. Um, one of the ways to trade, I know a lot of people do this, is you can pick up players that are listed improperly with a position change on them. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy Daily Blind, that somebody switched to a, tr a striker to try to impersonate Robin Van Persie, but it's not working, so they've listed him back down for like 5,000 coins. That's not good business. Uh, but if you see somebody that lists like a Daily Blind for you know, a thousand coins buy now and they moved him from a CDM to a CM, you'll be able to sell him on for a little bit more. That's kind of the gist of that. You saw a goal, a really stupid error for me right there, um, turning into a player when there was no protection for my two center backs uh, and he was able to take advantage on a very, very quick counter, but we do come back pretty darn quickly, 27th minute, Cherchi uh, there to put it in and he actually has kind of fallen off a little bit for us since he got, uh, since he picked up his injury, he just hasn't been as, as dominant dominating of a force and I actually you're gonna see this is the 90th minute but I brought Messi on in this game because this guy was very very good uh, and competent defender um, and I knew that I was gonna need something a little bit more special yet again to get a win out of this game and I'm lucky he gets a little panicky at the back and he makes a mistake right here and I'm able to nod it inside to Leo Messi this is why I want him on the team you can see he goes for the slides a bit of desperation but that little bit of quickness from Messi to get to the inside finesse shot to the near post in the 90th minute give me that dirty talk baby that 2-1 win that is exactly what I was hoping for. I'm going to be so sad when Messi is gone uh, and no longer able to be uh, to be brought on for those very few times that we've really, really needed him. But I wanted to keep the win streak going. I didn't want to draw. Uh, it wouldn't have been the end of the world with the draw. We'd still have a shot to win the division. But a win, all three points, definitely helps us out way, way more than that. That is where this match is going to come to a close. I want to thank you guys all very, very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying these episodes of Path to Power, and I will do my best to keep cranking them out for you. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Japes, and I will catch you all next time.